Hey, everybody. Once again, it is time for another power edition of Gun on One, the podcast. It is powered by the Jacob Sports Media YouTube machine. Well, this city, and I mean Philadelphia, is blazing with excitement, and rightfully so, because so much is happening sports-wise in this city. And at the epicenter of all this excitement is the undefeated Philadelphia Eagles. So joining me on this week's edition of Gun on One is one of my all-time favorites. You know him. You love him. He is Eagles defensive end, Brandon Graham. We're about to chop it up on this edition of Gun on One. This is Sal Palantonio from ESPN. I'm Brandon Graham. Lane Johnson here. This is the magnificent DJ Jazzy Jeff. This is Donovan McNabb. This is Chris Long. This is Mark Sumoff, the TV voice of the 76ers on NBC Sports Philadelphia. This is Eagles Hall of Fame quarterback, Ron Jaworski. Hello, I'm Jay Wright, head coach of Villanova basketball. Hey, I'm Brian Westbrook, and you're listening to the Gun on One podcast. And what's happening? This is your blessed boy, Brian Dawkins, Hall of Famer, and you're locked in to Gun on One. We're locked in to the Gun on One. Gun on One. Gun on One. You are locked on to Gun on One. I've been on the air for 25 years, but I could not wait to be on Gun on One with my man, Derek Gump. ESPN bracketologist Joe Lenardi telling you to stay locked on to Gun on One. It is a number one seed. All right, we're back with the latest edition of Gun on One. As you heard me say, it's powered by the Jacob Sports Media YouTube machine. And my guest for this show is a guy you never know what he's going to say, but he's always smiling. He is the one and only Brandon Graham. BG, what's up, my man? What up, what up, D-Gun? What's up, man? Good, man. Uh, so you hit the bye week, and how are you personally feeling physically and mentally right now? You know what? It couldn't have came at a better time. Uh, we've been grinding, grinding. I'm loving it because uh, they've been taking care of us, uh, and, this, and this bye week is definitely going to take care of us for the long haul of, of the season. Then we get like a little mini buy, like you know we play the one uh, the one game of uh, the Steelers. Then Thursday night, and we get another little mini buy. Then bam, we nine great game straight. So right now I'm in a great position, man. I feel good, body feeling great. Um, the team is at a good in a good place, and just trying to enjoy that moment. You know, usually when I talk to players about a bye week, they all say. I like to have that by like right in the middle of a season. You know, you've gone through the grinds of the first seven, eight, nine games, and then you get time to let that body rest, especially if you're still very much in a playoff hunt uh, for what's to come. But but you 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 don't mind having it right now? I mean, you know what? It is what it is. No, no sense of crying about it. How I'm looking at it now is we got that Thursday night real close that's coming up. Uh, enjoy that one. And that, that'll be halfway. That's like a – four-day weekend and you know you actually get that uh Tuesday off too so right I'm not even I'm not even tripping because because like I said the time is flying man and I'm just trying to enjoy the moment I ain't in no rush all right man let's listen to what I'm saying now the Philadelphia Eagles are the six and oh Philadelphia Eagles the only undefeated team in the National Football League how does that sound man being in Philly I mean it's been it's been a long time since that happened and uh, I'm just love. I'm just loving um, just how the team is responding uh, to adversity, you know, in these games because uh, it ain't been given to us. We get, definitely had to go get it. Even if we start fast, sometimes we don't finish as fast as we want, but we always come together at the end and figure it out. And uh, you know, that's that's something that's gonna serve us well, uh, especially when it get tight. And uh, you know, we've been there. Now it's time to go make a play. And uh, you know, people definitely has mm -hmm. been rising to that challenge. You know, everybody who has watched this team could look at this team on paper and and realize it was going to be a talented team. But did you honestly think you'd be a six and zero team right now? I mean, you know me; I'm always optimistic yep. in that yep. way, and I, I always pray for a team like this. Um, but I'm 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 definitely taking it one week at a time. I'm happy we six and zero. Um, it is it is great that our goals. Is being set. I mean, being met right now as far as winning every game, one and zero, uh, trying to make sure we're taking care of who, who's in front of us right now. And um, yeah, man, yeah, I'm, I'm loving that we six and zero because we we making some history in uh, in Philly right now. Um, as far as you know, just some of the greats that uh, that came before us uh, when they made their run. So I'm hoping that we can do a little better. You know, the cherry on top of this run was 
beating the Dallas Cowboys before you guys got to take that sigh of relief. I'm looking at your face. How gratifying was that? Man, that felt so good uh, because it was so many people talking stuff. Um, of course, you know, we we have our little phone with it, but it was a lot of people talking that big stuff. Um, even at my uh, one of my appearances, uh, one a Cowboys fan came with a star hat and a star jacket. And it was just like that that, that star was the biggest star I, I've seen in a minute. And I told him they was going down. Uh, and I hope uh, he took the day off the next day because he's going to be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> how, much, how much trash talking was going on during that game? You know what, D Gun? This year I've been talking stuff, but not as much because I've been trying to. Uh, my massage therapist always been always been telling me like, "Look, save your energy. You don't need to be talking and giving away your energy." So I'm trying that out this year. But I'm kind of I'm walking up on people, just talking my little, taking my little jabs here and there, uh, having my fun. But I ain't yelling like I used to be. <laughs> Wait a minute. You, you mean to tell me that the therapist seems to believe that all that that verbal energy you you, you exert affects your overall stamina in a game? Hey, I mean, from from what, what she's been saying, hey, it has been true so far because I ain't been tired out there. And I mean, um, and, you know, my reps uh, have been, um, you know, been really good. And it's just like just coming out that rock, you know what I'm saying, and being able to come off the rock every play, every opportunity is is, is, is big for me. So, man, it, ha it has uh, changed my game a little bit. Uh, but I am uh, excited, uh, you know, just to see how far I go with it. Come, BG, come on, man. Now, you know, part of your game is is talking trash. How, how difficult has that been for you to have that self-control, man? Yeah, you know what? I, I I still talk my trash now. Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. But I'm not I'm not going crazy like every play, like all all day, every day. And then being tired after after then they got a first down saying, all right, tap out, tap out. I'll be back. Uh, but, you know, I. I Honestly, man, when it come up, you know, I ain't bowing down for, for nobody out there. I'm definitely going to talk my stuff, but uh, sometimes I'm more conscious of it, uh, of when I want to talk my stuff, I kind of hold back a little bit just just because I know, um, you know, I got to make sure that I'm uh, ready. I'm ready. And, and did I hear that you revealed on a WIP radio station that this was like a personal vendetta for Nick Sirianni? Hey, I mean, I, I, I did um, – you know what I'm saying? Uh, for Nick, it, it was crazy. Um, you know that that he had told me that he that they said last year that he don't belong on that field, and Ooh. I was just like, dang. You know what I'm saying? And so it it was. He told us after the fact, but it was just like you know um, he showed was uh, waiting on that game, and I know I would have been waiting on it too. Uh, if, some, if they, everybody would have ran up on me saying little stuff like that, because they did put fifty on you know the backups last year, and it was just. It 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 kind of I couldn't wait for this. I ain't gonna lie, I couldn't wait. So so how much uh, leading up to the game did Sirianni emphasize to you guys? Look, don't get caught up in pregame trash talking. I mean, you know, last year he wore the beat Dallas T-shirt, and of course it backfired on him. And then of course leading up to this game, Demarcus Lawrence down in Dallas, hey, you know the Philadelphia Eagles haven't played us. So did he put extra emphasis on hey, don't get caught up in that trash talking this week? Oh oh yeah, I mean I don't think. I don't even think he had to really say much. He just uh, – because didn't nobody really respond other than right. – you know what I'm saying? Like, it was crazy because I really thought it was going to be something that we said, uh, but ain't nobody say nothing. And Coach really just – was just like, look, you know, um, we know what we got to do when we go out there. Uh, and he played that towards the end uh, where, you know, what they were saying and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, he, he really tried to make it – it was all about us this week. And okay. um, he just was like, we, we go out there and do us, we'll get a win. And that's exactly what happened. So what was the game plan against Cooper Rush going in? I mean, here was a guy who was a habitual backup, but mm -hmm. all of a sudden he became the talk of the league because he was 4-0 this season, 5-0 career-wise, doesn't turn the ball over. Yet you ball, you guys generated uh, three turnovers against him. What was your game plan against him going into that game? Uh, just load the box, trust our corners. You know what I'm saying? Stop that run. Make him beat us with his arm. And, um, you know, he threw us three of them. And, I mean, I feel I feel good uh, just about Gannon going after him, uh, just making him beat us and keeping trying to keep the game out of Zeke and uh, Pollard's hands. Because that's what was helping them. I mean, like, you know, that running game was – I mean, that running game is their running game. They got, a, uh, they got some great play callers over there and 
um, you know, they 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 do them. They got a nice scheme, and so we uh we know we got our hands full just as much as they know the same way. And it's all it's all a chess match out there. But uh, you know, when we we knew, uh, just load that box up so that we can stop their run, and then um, uh, let Cooper beat us. You know, at the end of the game, you could tell that the Cowboys were frustrated. They stepped out of character. And after the game, you had said there were a number of undisciplined moments by Dallas that cost him in a lot of ways. What did you mean by that? Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to keep your head, your emotions. You got to be able to control those in, the, in those environments because um, they, they can hurt you, obviously, because you don't want to be penalized. The whole goal is to not be penalized. Uh, the less penalized teams in the league is the ones who win it. Uh, because they know how to take care of the, the football and they know how to uh, play their technique and know how to keep their head because um, you you know how I go. We all are valuable uh, for to our team. And so yep. uh, me going off on somebody and really trying to fight them, mm-hmm. knowing that I can get kicked out for the next game. Uh, and, and, and you know, coach would be like, man, now we really lost you. Um, you really hurt the team because we can't use you next week mm-hmm. and all this stuff. So you got to be able to keep your head. Uh, and I, I just seen that in, in um, the Cowboys that they got to work on that. So now this defense through six weeks uh, leads the league in takeaways with 14. What do you think the secret ingredients is in terms of why this has been such an opportunistic defense? I think it's always on our mind. We, we talk about it daily, uh, all the time. I mean, they do a great job. Nick Sirianni, man, he, he really do do a great job of just – keeping everybody level, like, just, like, look, just let's worry about the details. Look, this is good. He praise you with the good, and then he going to get on you with the bad. And I can respect it because at the end of the day, he only about getting better when he's uh, on the bad. And so, man, when you got a coach like that that ain't scared to step to none of his players, uh, but he stepped to him in a way where, you know, we all can receive it. And I think that, um, you know, that's very important when you're building a team because I got to be able to hold you accountable with, uh, you know, you connecting with your teammates and making sure that y'all are striving to get better with some of the stuff that I'm saying. And I'm not just talking, talking, uh, you know, you know, I'm talking good ball to you and you know what what we've been doing has been working but when you're not doing that. Uh, sometimes, you know, you don't want to hear it, but, but it's the truth. And so I, I can always appreciate coach on that because that's only going to help us as a team. Hey, I look at the collection of talent on this defense and I started going back to since you were uh, drafted by this team in 2010. So I'm going to ask you to put you on the spot. Compare this collection of defensive players, talent, versatility, uh, to any other defensive unit that you've played with, including this 2017 unit, or I'll go so far as to say, is this the best collection of defensive talent you played with in your tenure in Philadelphia? You know what I say? Um, um the one year, I mean, 2017 year, you know, we was a lot, a little better in the run, I would mm-hmm. say, uh, you know, up front. But the back end, our pass defense uh, wasn't as as great. But the front seven made up for that. You know what I'm saying? Not saying yep. that yep. corners wasn't as – but they wasn't James Bradbury, Darius Slay, you know, Mar- Marcus Epps, all them boys. I mean, yep. we had the middle. We had, a, we had a good middle, just like we got a, a decent middle now, CD. And uh, Marcus, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like when when you look at it, like we 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 got to tighten up on like little things that I see that we got to tighten up on is just like running stuff, like making sure that you know we dominated in that run. Because when we was playing that run in 2017, it was no question we was choking people out, all that stuff in the run, making you one dimensional for real. And that's I feel like we build into that. Uh, but you know, you can't have everything. You just when I compare the two. That's what I'm seeing. You know what I'm saying? Like our pass defense is good. Our corners is is man and and man, this is the best corners I've played with. Best defense, honestly, I've played with as far as you know how we communicate, how we playing together, and our rotation, all that stuff, man. And we got some dogs uh, for real. And you know, I just love uh, just how we how we how we just are in the classroom. How we just how the flow of everything has been going. Uh, with this team uh, this year, and it's the same. Like even with 2017, that that I gotta compare them to because that's the one. Like when 2017, we got greatness. I mean, we saw greatness. We uh, we we won it all. So I mean, they always gonna be up there, and I'm always gonna compare, especially with you know a team like this that we got right now. It's like man, 
we almost spot on with just how we how we communicate and how we loving on each other and all that stuff. And yeah. I mean, man, I, I feel the vibe because the the speech has been good. Everybody been just you know flowing, and um, I, I just love this ride, and I'm just trying not to miss it like I did a little bit in 2017 because it kind of snuck up on you. You know what I'm saying? And you was enjoying it, but you yeah. was on to the next. You were trying to get there, and now that I got a ring, I'm kind of like, and start, and I start to see little stuff like this. It's like, man, you know what? I'm just enjoying it. Just like, you know, I'm in year 13. What am I tripping about on um, week to week? It's just like, look, enjoy uh, the moment because you do got a really good team. We are six and zero. Everything that we done talked about so far, we done got it. So let's keep on. Let's stay focused on that and let's stay building. So man, yeah, I'm I'm just hyped to be in this moment. I'm glad you brought up the run defense because I've referred to it as times as a Jekyll and Hyde run defense. Mm -hmm. There are times you guys have played rock solid, and then all yep. of a sudden the running backs start running, run, picking up chunks of real estate. Why has there been such an inconsistency in defending the run? You know what? It's just honestly that um, sometimes just one person might be out of gap or one person uh, might have fit it wrong, and it's just like little stuff that kind of pop up because, like you said, man, it's like a – Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to be more consistent, and I know it's going to be more consistent, but I'm just saying if I'm critiquing us, um, well, we need to step it up a little bit. Um, you know, just even myself, I'm just talking me too. It's like, you know, making sure uh, we, we really dominate that run because uh, that's going to help us, you know, for the long haul uh, too because our pass defense is really good. And so let's just work on, like, making sure that we don't let nobody get nothing, be stingy with everything. And so – yeah, man, because I, of course, nobody want to be ran on and uh, running the ball. Uh, that's something that that just shouldn't be tolerated by no defense. And uh, we all, I know, we're gonna get better as we keep as we keep working every week. Personally, you you had basically uh, had prepared us when you were on our show Sports Take earlier this year. You said you were anticipating uh, anticipating playing more of a reduced role. Oh, yeah. Well, as we look at it now through six games. You're playing 43% of the snaps compared to Josh Sweat pay, playing 63-plus percent of the snaps. I, I know the type of competitor you are, and I know you will never make waves about individual numbers. But as a consummate competitor, even though you mentally prepared yourself for this, is it still in some ways hard to accept that you, you were there was a point in your career when you were playing the majority of the snaps. Now, as you get older, Starting to play less and less. Is that hard to accept? You know what? That um, it was in the beginning, the first okay. couple of games, because it's like you used to being out there uh, during certain moments, and it's just like, oh, you know what? You know what? Stop tripping. Like you know, you gotta you gotta fight. What's easy to do, and that's complain about right. about whatever. Like you know, what I'm saying that I knew this going in, and it's like, all right, man, just get adjusted. Like you know, you're gonna it's gonna be all right. Just make sure when you get when you get in, you just you know value them reps. And you make sure you go go hard as you can, and your play gonna come. And man, everything has happened uh, just like that. Like man, I just enjoy whenever I go in. I don't worry about nothing. I try to help the guys like I've been doing. And man, I try to keep it like that. And when it starts to sneak in, sometimes because you know how to go like like a Dallas game, and you want and you gotta oh, have yeah. a moment. You gotta yeah. have it, and you like man, I want to be out there, but. Just like I wasn't tripping, and then look, I make a I make a play on hitting the quarterback, CD catch it, and you know it's just like man, don't go out there and, and trip because you might miss your play. You know what I'm saying? And and it's like man, all it takes is one. And mm -hmm. I look at it like I get, like you say, 43% of the plays. So it's like I'm, I got my opportunity. Just got to make sure I stay focused. And so that's where I'll be playing those games in my head, man. Just trying to look at the bright side of it. Uh, when I when I catch myself in those moments, uh, when you feel like when you just itching because of the flow of the game, and you know, and you feel like you got to move, that's gonna yeah. hurt them on certain stuff because you you know warmed them up. But man, I I, I love just seeing us uh, all out there, uh, you know, rushing rushing together and rushing, uh, you know, what I'm saying for each other because man, I'm telling you, Hassan, uh, the boy Sweaty, uh, yeah. our room, our room, man, we got some, we got some, we got a really good room and really good. Um, uh, rookies that's listening so I try to make sure I'm always in a positive light uh, always trying to uh, help them guys uh, you know let them know what I what I see going on out there on the field paying attention to you know just everything uh, just like I would want them to help me so yeah man I just try to fight against that 
How would you respond to those who, who are on the outside looking in saying the Eagles four man pass rush is not getting it done. They're not putting enough pressure on a quarterback. Hey, well, we women, you know what I'm saying? Like I look yeah, at it like yeah. people ain't looking at the film and seeing how fast this ball is getting out. And then like, that's why our pass defense is, is better because, you know, we got corners in them that's deflecting passes and stuff like that. The sack right. numbers, uh, they, they, they there. I mean, you know, I mean, we, we got, I got three, Fletch got three. I mean, we working uh, out of six games and it's just like, uh, Hassan got what four and a half. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's like right, right. We, we working. If you looking at the game and you seeing uh, what's happening, we winning our rushes. Is just balls out, balls out. And and I feel like um, we getting a lot of PBUs. I mean, we got to add them PBUs in there. On you know how much how much is going on and how how fast the time of the uh, throw uh, when we get there. So it's a lot of stuff, man, that that goes into it. So yeah. we always talk about. Everybody know the Eagles um, invest in their pass rush, so we always getting the ball out on us. Because uh, when you see guys like Aaron Donald and people that terrorize the league, yep. and they get one on ones, and you seeing them getting four sacks in the game, it's like, man, you see these guys, they never helped them, they never did this. But if it's us, they're going to help, they're going to chip, they're going to do all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I hear you. Yeah, we always talking about that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, man, uh, it's, all, it's all good because. Like we say, when sacks come, they come in bunches. Hey, a little birdie told me that you have graduated from wrong again, D-Gun, to now focusing your attention on Seth Joyner analyzing your defense. Is, is that an accurate statement? Hey, I seen, I seen both of y'all uh, talking, but I was like, I, I, uh, it was something that was played to me with Seth, just like how it would be with you. And, uh, yeah, I definitely said, uh, you know, is that good enough, Seth? Because uh, Seth always, uh, you know, you know how he is. He gonna find, he gonna, he gonna be good and bad with it. Like he gonna, and I want to make sure uh, he, he just hold on to the words sometimes. You know. What ah! I mean? <laughs> hey, look, look, look. I know you. I know there's no way that you could listen to everything that's being said in the media, but somehow, some way, you always know what's being said. All right, come on. I've known you a long time. Who are your sources that tip you off on stuff like this? And I can't give you my sources, man. Now you Come on, man. I thought we were family, man. And we all family, but you know, I can't tell you all. Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 what do you think about all of the sports excitement going on in this city right now? I mean, you guys are 6-0. and oh. Phillies are in the uh, playoffs and, and pushing towards trying to get to a World Series mm -hmm. for the first time in a long time. Flyers starting off undefeated. I mean, this, this city is buzzing with excitement and pride with the sports teams across the board. And it is. It's red October and and it, and the Eagles 6 and 0 right now, man. It's the fi it, the fire is burning in Philly right now and I'm just like I told you enjoying the moment, man, cuz I'm telling you, it ain't always been like this and when it is like this, you got to appreciate this moment cuz they come and go real fast because when you having fun, hey, you that's the last thing you're thinking about is it being over. And then when it's over, it's over. <laughs> hey, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what I think is the coolest thing, though, is how all of the pro athletes in this town go support the other teams. Like, you, we'll see you guys at a Phillies game or a Flyers mm -hmm. game. You'll see Flyers and Phillies at your games, vice versa. You know, that, you don't see that that often in a lot of cities, man, but I love the cross energy. And, he, you know, even Sixer players are always at your games and stuff like that. I love the cross energy between the sports teams in Philadelphia, man. For real, for real. I'm with you on that, man. I really do um, feel like I, I get to meet, you know what I'm saying, people that I don't normally get to see uh, yeah. in those moments. Um, and it's cool, especially them coming to our games. And I'm sure when we come to their games, uh, they'll come up to us because now, you know, we done met each other, uh, you know, through just them supporting us. So, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's real cool uh, to be able to – uh, see guys supporting each other in the city because that's what you need more of that. Who's the one? Who's the one athlete in this town that you wanted to meet and you finally got to meet? Well, you know what? I, I got to meet uh, Embiid uh, okay. you know, years ago, but it, it's just cool to keep on seeing him popping in. And um, I mean, it was cool to see Meek Mill, even though I didn't meet him. Uh, it was just you know just to be up, you know, what I'm saying in, in the building, and, and you just want to go out there and perform and have a good have a good game because you know they're rooting for you. 
on uh, on a regular basis, uh, and I know you don't have a lot of free time. I mean, between your profession and being the consummate dad, I see a little one behind you there. Um, do you, do you regularly watch the other games like the Sixers, the Phillies, and the Flyers? Oh yeah, oh yeah, always watching. Um, you know, just so I can have conversation. You know, with people about the games. Um, just enjoy uh, just seeing people perform perform well, man. Because I know what that feel like, you know, and I, and then I see some people it's just like it's all the time, like in beating them, be out there destroying, uh, you know, just elite of the elites. And so, man, I just uh, enjoy the moment of uh, just being able to see uh, see them. Hey, how you spending the bye week? I'm gonna be here. Uh, I'm gonna be at uh, the facility, just working out and doing little stuff uh, in the mornings, and just enjoying my time by the kids at school, and then you know, get be in daddy mode uh, by the end of the day. But uh, I might uh, enjoy New York uh, for the weekend or something. Okay, um, being a full time dad, I mean, in a lot of ways, that's tougher than being a full time uh, athlete. Um, but also, I will say this. Is it also a great mental outlet to just get your mind clear and to get away from what you do every day of the week? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, it got this, it got its ups and downs. You know, sometimes the kids is just in a mood where they just want to cry and, and you know not listen. And, right, right. And just, and it's you know you deal with all that, but uh, for the most part, man, it, it's been cool to see a baby girl uh, every time I come through this door, man. It's, just just loving on her daddy and just man i gotta enjoy that too uh and, and baby boy same way loving on yep. his mama but then he come over and give me a little bit <laughs> uh -oh. it right there uh oh yeah. is it tough saying no to kids at times uh you know what yes and 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 i mean when they doing good it's tough uh but, but I, I try to have a good balance with that too because yeah. I mean, they always they they already you know uh, blessed already just with this situation being in this situation. Sure. Uh, but I I try to let them know that it's not all about uh, stuff that you get and all that little stuff. It's about what you do or what you have uh, for other people and trying to serve other people and you know, man, yeah, just just trying to instill in them a good uh, good morals. Uh, to let them know that yeah. you know, it ain't all about the money. It ain't all about uh, you gotta you gotta have a good balance and and. Um, you know, I try to stay on baby girl, even though it's great to have nice things and yeah. do, do good things. I'd rather you go on a trip than to waste it on, you know, a bag, even though I know you want to have that bag on the trip. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's like, I know, man. But just trying to instill in them uh, some stuff uh, because you, they're not going to grow up like how you did. But it's just uh, for the most part, when things pop up, I try to get them my experiences and uh, where that led me when I was you know, wanted too much of something when I know I shouldn't have this right now, or it might not just be the time to have this right now, but you forced me and then here you go. You needed that for this. Now you done wasted your money on this. Now yeah. you needed the money for that. Now your priorities, you know what I'm saying? Like you got to make sure that you, um, you know, I'm just trying to help them on that. Yeah. Uh, but while still just trying to let them enjoy being a kid. Man, as easy going as you are and you're always smiling, I find it hard to believe that you have a tough side to you when it comes to your kids. I have a I have an inkling that you are soft as cotton when it comes to your kids. Yeah, you'd be surprised, man. <laughs> like you said the same thing. I would just like, I just don't like I know for me, you know, um Everybody got their little stuff. Uh, yeah. With baby girl, and be getting on your nerves, and baby boy, and I, I always try to make sure, uh, you know, I control me. And but at the end of the day, I got to be stern too, and let her yeah. know, like, look, uh, ain't nobody gonna be, um, you know, easy with you in this world. You know what I'm saying? And so I try to let her know, like, look, you gonna have to listen, because right. mommy and daddy don't want to do nothing but see you win. And so whatever we telling you to do, please listen, because. At the end of the day, you got to listen because you up under our roof and we responsible for you. And then when it's your day and your time to get out this thing, then that's when you make your own decisions. But you're still going to be calling daddy because you, that's right. uh, you're you going to need some help on some stuff. So, look, just just do it right the first time. Listen. And so that's our baby girl thing. Baby boy, he good at listening, but he kind of do what he want to do when he want to do it. And then you got to get on him there. So. It's just uh, you gotta find. A, it's just funny to see how different both the kids is. Plus, she's get plus uh, plus baby girl's gonna realize in a few years that daddy rich. <laughs> she's definitely she's definitely going to be hitting up daddy when she's in her twenties, thirties, forties. 
they already, man, it's already crazy at school. <laughs> you know, the kids, the kids be like, are, are, are your daddy, is your daddy Brandon Graham? It's so funny, man. It's <laughs> like the kids, what the kids already got to go through uh, yeah. in school. So, yeah, man, I'm just trying to, trying to keep her balanced and keep her, keep her cool and, you know, let her know she ain't got to, you know what I'm saying, do certain stuff to uh, get approval from people too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, be you, yeah. be you. Hey man, look, you're 34 years old now. I figure you have one, maybe two good years left in you. And mm -hmm. then you have to make that transition. Don't forget, Jacob Sports Media and, and Gun on One, we're waiting for you. We're hey, sitting man, here I waiting see, for you. I see y'all out here, man. Y'all making moves. We're making noise, man. Hey, the, the, the Jacob Media, Gun on One posse blowing up, man. I keep telling you. I see y'all. I see y'all. Trust me. Hey, well, we'll definitely talk about it, man. You there already you know. That's why All I'm right. sitting here now. All right, man. All right. You know how we love it. I love chopping it up with you any chance I get, man. And as always, I cannot thank you enough for giving me some time uh, during your bye week. And uh, you know me, I wish you nothing but success. Um, and, and I want nothing but the best for you. Keep doing you. Keep being you. Because, right. uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how when you enter a room, a practice field or whatever the case may be, the room lights up, man, because of your personality. Don't ever lose that, dude, whatever you do. Thank you, man. You already know. Same to you, yeah, man. man. It's just when you meet. I mean, for me, man, I'm just I'm just thankful for who I am. And yeah. like you said, don't let yeah. nobody change you because, I mean, sometimes you deal with, with people that don't like it, you know what I'm saying, because of whatever the case may be. Right. But, um, that definitely is not my problem, and I can't take on everybody's problems. And so I always pray for people now, man. It's like yeah. keep my peace uh, a lot. And so, um, yeah, man, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm stay me as much as I can. And I'm going to pray about it when I, when I feel like I'm changing a little bit. Amen. All right. That's going to wrap up this latest edition of Gun on One for my man, Brandon Graham, who I'm always appreciative of for giving D-Gun some time. Uh, I'm Derek Gunn. Uh, once again, it is uh, powered by the Jacob Sports Media YouTube machine for everybody out there. Uh, hey, stay blessed. But as I tell you each and every week, always be a blessing to each and every person you encounter when you get the opportunity. Until next time. So long, everybody. The greatest fans on earth. It's a bold statement, but would you expect anything less from Philadelphia? 58 years of heartache creates a toughness, a grit, a resolve not found in most. Sure, our prayers were answered, but now that we've had a taste, we're looking for more. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles.